The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of the truth. As we have been noticing the things concerning salvation of our life when we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And when as such, trying to know the things which are quite essential for us about our enemy and the depths of Satan, the offensive strategy of the Satan, or as such, the way how it is now planning tactically to make an unbeliever not to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, the one uniquely born, Mone Guinea of the Greek, as such, God becoming God-man, the way the design where which God has designed for a man to be saved by a simple act of faith, by believing in God, Almighty, the Most High, the true and living jealous one, were with, in the form of an anthropomorphism, changed through metamorphically, having been given salvation unto us, were with, under the sanctification process of our Lord God, the Holy Spirit, believing upon the gospel, which is a Evangelia for us, and believing upon him, we shall have life eternal freely given unto us by faith alone in Christ alone and not by works as such. The tactical plans made by Satan to make them to be busy as such, not to believe upon him. And number two, making a derailment of the grace-oriented believers to learn Bible doctrine from the original word of the scriptures of isogogic, categorical and exegetical study of the subject and rather replace them with their sheer lot of teachings, making them oriented as to the things which are not essential for them, replacing the way of salvation with the works, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and making them to believe lies and forsake the mercies of the Lord by absorbing lying vanities. Even as such to the fact that though they consider Christ as a good man, with the Buddhists, even as well as the Islamists saying that Christ was a great prophet, but not able to realize that he is the Savior. He is the one who paid the price of expiation for us on the cross, because he is the one who became God, becoming God-man, cladded in human nature, so that in the form of a filial relationship, we can come to know the atonement of our sins, the first fruit from the dead who are in sleep being resurrected as such our faith is glorified when we believe upon his doctrine when we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as our only Savior and thus believing upon him we shall have life eternal and there is some systematic procedure as such how we could worship how we could believe upon the Lord how we could know the things but we shall learn that from a very divine basic design Wherewith God created man and woman. Wherewith the divine designs of man and woman, when God created man from the dust of this earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of lives, that's what the Hebrew says. And the lives represent the soul and the activated human spirit as such. That's the reason when they have been kept on the volition test, they have been told. If you shall eat this fruit, dying you shall surely die. That's what number one meant the physical, the spiritual death, and number two it meant the physical death. When Christ died on the cross, two deaths. The death number one, spiritual, fulfilling the atonement for us, that believing upon him we shall have eternal life. And number two, physical death, wherewith 
he had the power to lay down his life and the power to take it back. And the physical death is a representation of his saying that he has finished the work and there is nothing that he could be waiting here on this earth to fulfill his accomplishment. And he said, as in the third day he shall be resurrected again, that's a good Wednesday, it's not Good Friday. As the Christian believers follow the practice of Good Friday, it has to be Good Wednesday because there were two Sabbaths which were taking place in that time of an era. And the one greater Sabbath which used to happen only once in a year, that was the day in which Christ was slaughtered, in which the, the animals would be slaughtered for atonement of that festival. But here, the same thing is happening here in this Sabbath. Christ, who has been without spot, without blame, has been died on the cross, and that's good one as day. So that's a different subject we shall look in later time. But here, when Christ died, as he told, the third day he's erected, he, he got resurrected again. And that resurrection indicates that he is Lord Jesus Christ. And that resurrection indicates the way he has told that he has the power to lay down his life and the way he has the power to take it back. He laid down his life and the body went to the grave and the soul went to the Hades and the spirit went back to God the Father. And Lord Jesus Christ, as he told in his physical death, he got resurrected again. So there are two deaths, even as such, there are two breath of life breathed into the nostrils of Adam, the first man who has been created. And this man became a living soul spirit, a spirit representing the relationship with God the Father and the soul representing to have a fellowship with the opposite sex. And that's what, when Adam was there, he was not happy with the things wherewith he used, he can, he thought that he could be a right mate for him to enjoy. He had animals, he had fruits, he had everything for him in the garden kept. But he was alone, that's what it's transwritten in Genesis chapter 2. He was alone and God, Lord God made him a deep sleep and out of his right bone he has taken. That's what is the right woman. And the one, it doesn't mean to say that he was, she was the only one, so Adam would have been happy with her and he didn't have any choice. No, the divine design of our Lord, it says that she was perfectly beautiful, perfectly brilliant, perfectly sense of humor, and she was the one wherewith he would be completely fulfilled, and she was enough for him, because she was not there to complete him, but she was there to complete him, and she did it, and Adam was satisfied in her, and he was not a reclusive creature, but rather he was a person who was willing to be there with her, and as soon as he recognized her, he said to her, she is born of my bone, and she is flesh from my flesh. That's the way he was satisfied, that's the way he was fulfilled, and that's the divine order of the origin of design where God kept man to be satisfied in her. And that is the way how in a simple design of origination, God originated this most exceptional of all human relationships, and God made first Adam. And then from the dust of the ground, and Adam was total obedience, in carrying out his position as ruler over God's creation, even in the perfect environment of garden, where he was surrounded by all cattle, the bird, and the sky, and every beast of the field, Adam was not a reclusive creature. He was lonely and incomplete. But by himself, Adam could not be fulfilled. In God's infinite wisdom and love, he furnished exactly the right solution. And the right solution as told in Genesis 2.18, stating that it is not good for a man, that is Adam, to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And even as such, if they are believer or unbeliever, if they are listening to this step, they can understand how a man can have a right helpmate, or a right woman, or a right soulmate. Even as such, the movies, what we see and what we listen, they are famous when they are concerning about a love between a man and a woman. They're famous as to such an extent that love, relationship between this opposite sex is what makes him completely satisfaction. That's the soul that God brought into the breath of nostrils of Adam. And the spirit was there to have higher relationship than this opposite sex, which is God. So there are three categories of love. The category number one, the love of the spirit that is towards God. Category number two, love towards your opposite sex, that is, whomsoever, right man, right woman, or right woman, or right man. And category number three, and this love is towards 
the relationship where with you come in contact with all of your members including your father mother brother sister and your relationships and the brethren of the fellowship where with you have so these two top priorities are most essential because number one man is not having eternal life if he doesn't have a right and true helpmate for him and that right and true help as divinely designed and originated includes a man for a woman a woman for a man wherewith a man is incomplete without a woman and wherewith a woman is not at all complete without a man likewise any member of the human race upon this earth is never complete or never saved without lord jesus christ and this is divine design of our lord that's the reason lord became god man for us on this earth so that believing upon him and accepting his salvation as adam received the help by lord god for his satisfaction and for his completeness the woman who was a brilliant creature of all time the first name of a woman was Isha, and it was not Eve. Eve was after the fall. That is the metamorphism what we look. But before the fall, she was Isha, and he was called Ish, the two Hebrew words, a beautiful name. Wawit, a true feminine woman. Wawit, she had all the things Wawit, a man would be complete. And when as such, if you have a right and true fellowship with your right woman, you don't need to have any satisfaction from any member of the human race to replace that woman by going and drinking in bars, as such many members fail in the marriages, by going and wasting time in solitary movies, by going and wasting your time with your friends. That is what half they have been failed towards the response they have for a right woman because the responsibility and the loyalty of love and the dedication towards her is not proper so they are failing to maintain that relationship but it is of our lord and savior jesus christ who has designed to such an extent that adam was completed in her to such an extent that he opted eve that is after the fall when they ate the fruit and the, and the, and the volition test was been failed. He opted Eve and not Lord Jesus Christ to stand by him. Because when he saw her naked, he was fulfilling for her lust. And he went back off her. But he never waited upon the Lord who said not to eat that fruit. That's the reason why it, it is such a kind of a strong relationship between Adam and Eve that they both forsook the Lord and they went on their own way. Likewise, for you, your right solution is Lord Jesus Christ. Because in Him you have your completion, in Him you have your eternal life, in Him you have your righteousness imputed to you, and this is category number one, love. And in Lord Jesus Christ is your right design. As much true it is that a man is fulfilled in a woman, in her design it is as true as such for a man to be fulfilled to have his eternal life apart from such kind of a sure works which are nothing but ministers cloth in the sight of the lord it is god's grace god's design and god's purpose to send you a savior and that savior is lord jesus christ and it is not only for the unbelievers even for the entire world which stands written john 3 16 that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that is monegine the uniquely born son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have and, but 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 will have an everlasting life as adam wouldn't be satisfied with the beasts of the field or the cattle of the uh, of the sky or the birds of the sky he wouldn't have been satisfied with them but he waited for the right woman to be waited and he could be satisfied in her and he recognized her and said a bone from my bone and a flesh from my bone a fr flesh from my flesh it's the same exact manner as such even you as an unbeliever should recognize lord jesus christ and as you think there is no substitute for a man a woman and a woman for a man likewise for any member of the human race there is no substitute to be saved apart from lord jesus christ to the man and man to the lord jesus christ as god designed in his divine nature the woman likewise god designed lord jesus christ for our salvation to this earth and as such the strategic 
failure of Satan, which knows that already it has lost the battle in its offensive manner as such it planned right from the beginning of the creation of mankind to infiltrate the genes of genetic code and the Nephilims were born and God in his grace has found a manner wherewith they can do it. Even in the Babel Tower, God has found a grace wherewith he can do it. Because those people have thought in their minds if they could follow the mundane astrology, if not the natural astrology as such, by combination of the both, they could look and have a relationship as such not to make an entrance to the heaven, to build a road to the sky, but rather thinking that gods and priests are there high above, so it is a matter for us to build a tower and we can have communication with them, and which is form a plan of Satan, wherewith God would destroy them, wherewith they were thinking that it would be one worldism, one socialism, and God in his grace found that the people who are following such sort of an astrology manner of methods of mundane astrology and as well as such as this natural astrology even as such in today's Christian era this astrology taken the place of a Christian science has become much more strong and the people of such 90% of the believers are also following astrology wherewith they think it is their fate depending upon the astrological sign and the traits of that animal of 12 zodiac signs is leading them and that's what it's controlling them and that's what it's their future wherewith it is one of the offensive strategy of satan to blind their minds and keep away from them not to believe upon the lord jesus christ and keep away from them not to know the truth the truth which is learned only through exegetical categorical isochoical study of biblical doctrine which is bible the mind of christ revealed inspired and eliminated under the controlling mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit in this unique dispensation of the church age when we are born again by regeneration by believing the gospel which is to believe in the lord jesus christ and you shall be saved and after believing upon the lord jesus christ it is the duty of the believer to rebound to confess his sins and come back and be under the controlling mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit as such your face to life will be to rebound 1 john 1 9 and under the controlling mental ministry as ephesians 5 18 b while right if it were not under the power of lord god the holy spirit your face to life is a waste and that's a different story. So these people who have been looking as such and following the tactical plan of Satan, of strategy, wherewith it knows very well that it has already lost the battle. So it wanted to make one worldism through Babylon the attack upon mankind. But they failed again. God changed the languages and made them to stop the construction of Babylon. And then it had a startling attack upon Abraham, which I have been covered all these things in my previous tapes. Even as such, God graciously protected that Abraham and his wife, Sarah, wherewith Pharaoh would have been used in, her, in his harem, this Sarah. But Lord, in his grace, plagued the Pharaoh, and Pharaoh came in confession of the sins and asked Abraham to pray for forgiveness unto him. And all the plans of Satan have been failing because Satan knows very well it is Adam who will be satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and Adam would never be satisfied in the cattle, or in the beasts, or in the flowers, or in the trees of the sky. But he knew he would have a right woman for him in the form from his own bone and the form from his own flesh. That's how real it is that even we, as the members of the human race, apart from Christians or believers, have been satisfied in whom? In Lord Jesus Christ. We, when we get married, we will be satisfied in the right woman, and the right woman will be satisfied in the right man. And man is made ahead, and woman was being come out of the man, so it is man, in a way, representing the federal head of the race, of the human one, we speak in a singular word called as man. It quite obviously includes the woman as well. This man will be satisfied in the woman. Likewise, when God created man in the image of God, he wanted him to have the salvation of God through whom? Do you think Adam would be satisfied if he were happy with the relationship of the cattle or the birds of the sky or the beast of the field? No way, no chance. Even you as such, even if you can make you, right now if you ask even an uneducated brute, 
he would tell us how was it possible for me to marry this castle how it is possible for me to carry to marry to that bird bird in the sense not a woman the birds of the sky the nature when a such woman has been termed as a bird by some of the people who do not know the importance of chivalry and to respect a woman because they are not aristocrats and christian aristocracy will be more important when you learn and imply the virtue and the knowledge of biblical doctrine and you are not a christian aristocrat in this church age until and unless you grow up in biblical doctrine so it is not the birds of the field not the cattle but in whom if he could ask an illiterate person he would say i would marry a woman and not a man in fact even he would say i would marry a woman who is a mature one and not a person where with they could try and they could understand the things and wherein he could say that i would marry a woman who is quite capable of doing the things who is mature who has a sense of humor who can handle the things but not a baby you are not married to a girl nor a girl gets married to a boy marriages are made to men who has responsibility upon his shoulders who is mature who has a sense of humor when as such a marriage is not done to a girl but rather a marriage is done to a woman who is feminine in his nature who has done the things which are quite essential for her to do the things who has the characters of proverbs chapter 31 and what the woman is not quite capable to be taken and there is no other rubies or money which can buy such kind of a woman you cannot find a virtuous one it is not possible for you to replace a woman of virtue so this man marries such kind of a woman but he never marries a cattle he never marries the beast of the field he never marries the birds of the sky even this ill uneducated illiterate brute knows very well that his marriage has to be made with a woman when this illiterate fool knows that he has to marry a woman how much more we learned believers or unbelievers ought to know by the reasoning of your logical mind when you are out under the darkness where with satan has kept you in dark where with it has blinded that you are spiritually lame and you're spiritually blind and spiritually dead that you should try to know the truth that your right salvation is lord jesus christ where with there may be so many attacks upon this doctrine where with the people fail to believe upon this doctrine where with the way this men they have come up to realize the importance of such doctrine but this men who do not have such kind of an understanding to believe upon the lord jesus christ and this men who do not even have a simple logical sequence when the sit and read and to know the gospel as such that this is the right god and this is the true and living god and they, apart from him we do not have any salvation they can try with their brain with their understanding of logical sequence under the common and efficacious grief grace of our lord god the holy spirit that lord jesus christ is great and he is unique and he is our only unique savior and apart from it there is no savior at all and in the realm of the future millennium as stated in isaiah it stands written that one walking behind the another would say throw off this idol throw off this god which are not gods at all but rather these are the men were with who are going to worship lord jesus christ in the millennium temple in israelites they say this clots these gods are nothing they are just like ministers cloth they are fit for nothing they are not our gods our god is only one try and unique lord jehovah who in return anthropomorphically came in the form of 
a Trinitarianism stating that God the Father with the purpose of phase one salvation, God the Son with the purpose of executing that salvation, and God the Holy Spirit with the purpose of revealing that salvation, so that now when you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, your phase one salvation has been executed. And number two, your phase two of your life will be executed in the controlling mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, so that your life can be worth of maximum glorification of God, and you can become a believer of maximum glorification as such an example stated for us in Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 1 who was a Daniel was an Eric was an aristocrat who has been written between the two names of Noah and Job indicating to the fact that Daniel has to be there written by Ezekiel who doesn't even know who went into the second cycle of captivity but in the first cycle of captivity Daniel was gone and he was not even knowing why Lord God the Holy Spirit has made him to return that name and if a preacher like Zachary Naik or Sheikh Ahmad Didad or any Buddhist person who is spiritually dead who doesn't know to discern what is right and what is wrong if he preaches upon Daniel he may think to take a reference from the book of Daniel stating his Daniel no but Daniel should be started from the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 and that's the point of introduction for him to know that Daniel doesn't have a origin from the book of Daniel, but rather his origin starts from the book of Ezekiel. While with, depending upon his aristocracy, the way he has been grown up, though he has been taken to the captivity, Lord God prepared him. His father was a teacher, his mother was a teacher. They were sure students of Bible doctrine, and they thought Daniel who had his edification complex while he was still in teenagers. And this man survived three empires. The Chaldean of the, Mid of, of the Persian empires, the one dying out and the one was been there and was become a prime minister to rule over there. And Daniel was such a kind of a great man. God used him to be under the great king Cyrus. And this will happen to you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ in this dispensation of the church age. Even as such it happened in the Old Testament times, though they had an endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But for you, in this unique dispensation of the church age, being under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have the things for you. You can become greater than Daniel. When you learn Bible doctrine, and God used Daniel over a period of 90 years on this earth. And he has given us the things that are concerned to happen upon the people of Israel. After the rapture of this church, and the church being sandwiched between these two advents of the first advent and the second advent. And these people who have been revealed after Daniel's ministry, and Ezekiel being a witness to put him before Noah and in middle of Joab. When Daniel was placed, Noah, Daniel and Job as stated in 14.1 of Ezekiel, people would have realized the fact why Daniel's name has been written there. Though he was angered to Ezekiel, he was not knowing what he was writing. But he said, it is under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the names of Noah, Daniel and Joab. That's the ministry and it's a challenge for you as an young believers, as a teenagers. Has your name been written in the pillar of in the pillar of history of records of Lord Jesus Christ? That you being though given such kind of a great salvation and such kind of Bible doctrine of completed one, have you grown up? Have you learned? Have you been edified? Daniel learnt it. And it was a primary responsibility upon the teachers of his father and mother who were primary teachers to train him up. And you as parents are doing it. Are you training up your children? Or are you leaving behind a wealth for them? You have to leave behind a wealth of Bible doctrine. And learning upon the Bible doctrine, they can design their world. It is not as such that you design their world by giving them the money. You have to give them the doctrine and the edification complex of the soul, which is so intense that a period of 18 months is enough for them to learn Bible doctrine under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by taking daily tapes. Learning Bible doctrine, learning Bible doctrine, day by day, day by day, day by day. And until and unless you reach to the status quo of edification complex of the soul. 
you cannot grow up. Daniel was used with a purpose where it has been written between Noah and Job. Noah representing the pre adamic times of this Devilian period. And Job representing the time of Abraham. And during these both times, it meant to say, Lord God, the Holy Spirit makes an evidence as such that there was Noah and the pure genetic race. And there was a testing of this angelic conflict used through Job, who's, who was the first person who has been witnessed in the prosecution trial, stating to the fact that it is God and we have to obey God. Though he slays him, he shall trust upon the Lord. And though his bones have been squeezed out, but if this flesh, he can see the Lord. That's the testimony of Job. And the testimony of Noah, a preacher of righteousness, during a period where right, a man born purely of genes, and the perpetuation of the genetic race, not through Nephilims, because that was entirely flooded out. And these two evidences in the form of an history as such have told, even they have a lot more interpretations to be told. And why Daniel was placed between them? A statement of fact during the siege of Jeshulam in 606 under the ministry of Jeremiah to the battle of Carchemish, the third son of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king. When he was being taken captive, the fifth cycle of discipline set in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, these people would realize the failure for their not to learn to obey Lord Jesus Christ, not to believe upon the gospel, not to know the truth, not to stay and hang on upon the synagogues to learn and to teach sound Bible doctrine. The way they failed to form synagogue as Moses told them to do it in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17. That failure led them to realize, to know their forefathers called as Noah, and to realize the witness of testimony called as Job. And this Daniel was a man used because he revealed to them the 70 weeks. And this Daniel was a great aristocrat, a man with full of Bible doctrine. And he was used, though he had an endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But in this unique dispensation of the church age, we believers have the enlightenment, indwelling, and controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And how much more we have to be more than Daniel to represent Lord Jesus Christ as being a Christian aristocrat. And that's all possible only when we first be regenerated, be born again. And as such, as you pass down with your right man and the right woman, your relationship, and you understand the facts, as such you are incomplete without your right woman, as such your salvation is incomplete without Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the only salvation for you, and he is the only way for you. You can never be satisfied with the cattle of the field or the beasts of the field, which are just nothing but creation or creatures. While with the Hinduism, pantheism, Buddhism represent their gods with the creature. And Adam was not satisfied with that creature, but he waited for the right woman. And even as such in India, we find the goddess of Kali, the goddess of sex. And this man thinking that goddess of Venus would help us to have such kind of things which are quite essential for us now. A woman is not designed as such to have a goddess of fertility, mortality as such. A woman is designed to be under the authority of a right man. And we are with a right man who has been loyally dedicated, who is loyal enough to take care of her in his devotion. This man makes her a protection, a guard, a guardian for her. And this man fulfills her. And this man in return is being fulfilled in her and through her and in only her. Exactly the same way as this dying and perishing unbelieving nation also will be fulfilled when they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. 
this people will never be fulfilled in the creature of this battle, of this cattle, in the creature of this beast, in the flock of this birds of the fly. But rather, this unbelieving people will never even be satisfied by false gods and false images, which is not sovereign. They think that it is sovereign. At the end, it will be as if in the dream they are eating and drinking, trying to clear their thirst and hunger, but which has not attained nor will reach again that status quo of clearing their thirst. And these people fail to realize the fact that if it were believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ after the death, they will surely realize because the immortal divine soul given to them is accountable for them and the free volition given to them is accountable for them. But why did they fail to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and why did why didn't they use their conscious mentality or thinking to understand Lord Jesus Christ when the gospel has been being taught in as much as lucid way that we can teach them in as much as the way that we can train them to understand in the basic and the most common relationship of a man and a woman as a man cannot be satisfied and cannot be fulfilled apart from a woman so this human race which is dying and perishing of unbelieving world can never be satisfied, can never be saved, can never have salvation apart from the saving ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ who came in the form of a God-man, metamorphosed, cladded in human nature, in a filial one, through metamorphism as well as an anthropomorphism under the concept of Trinitarianism, believing upon Him we shall have life eternal. And these people fail to believe it is a, is a fact of dogmatic statement that these people are not satisfied in a woman, but rather they are getting satisfaction with the cattle or the beast or false religions. And the SOP for the believer, number one, is to confess his sins. And number two, isolate his sins Number three, forget his sins. And number four, keep moving. That is the technique of rebound and keep moving. And as we continue it through the confession of our sins of 1 John 1 9, it has been a long introduction for us now. Because I know the men, at least if they could watch a few minutes of this videotape, they can understand what is the plea for them to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And for the SOP for the believer, is rebound, which is 1 John 1 9 to use in the privacy of the priesthood. And as we look into the subject to answer back this unbelieving world, even as such, this Sheikh Hamad Dida, the Zakir Naik, or XYZ, in the form of a divine design where God created between man and woman, even as such, not only that, to make them to realize, to understand the things which are quite essential for them to understand, that is, believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be saved. So depending upon it, and upon the procedure, or upon the technique, we shall have a word of prayer, and come back and look into this subject. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that have given to us to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that are essential for us to know the truth. Even as such, Father, if it is thy will, and if the people are able to understand the truth that have given for us between a right man and a right woman as such, between a right God and right salvation as such, and for a man who is incomplete without a woman, even as such, we are incomplete without Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to have this regeneration process to be understood. And when we become trichotomous from a trichotomy nature, so that we can know the truth, and may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us as we continue it in the subject of training up the believers to know what is rebound and the confession of sins. And even as such, as we continue the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this unique dispensation of the churches to train up these unbelievers also. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. As you have been noticing the things which are quite essential for us, so I have been noticing, I have been, telling, I have been telling you, rebound, rebound, rebound. That's what you confess your sins. To cite a case as such what you have done. Then after confession, what? That's what you have to know the procedure as such. 
God created man and the woman to be as a divine design, even as such to have your fellowship with the true, living, jealous Lord God Almighty, the Most High God, who is nothing but Yahweh, Yehovah. You need to follow a right procedure wherewith God has designed it for you. And that right procedure for your worship is rebound. And that procedure demands for a believer to be under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So what you have to do, you have to confess your sins. And how is it possible for you to confess your sins? You think paying guilt or paying tithes or XYZ is what your confession of your sins is? No. Rebound is a grace provision given to us, which is 1 John 1, 9, not a license to sin, but a license to serve by God when we confess our sins to God the Father. And that confession of our sins is what? Number one, name your sins, that what you have done. Number two, isolate your sins. Number three, forget your sins. And number four, keep moving. When you have the procedure for your naming and then comes the isolation, as stands written in Hebrews 12:15, that the root of bitterness should not spring up nor cause trouble. And by it, many are being defiled. Even as you as a believer, the root for your sin has to be cut off which is a base or foundation of a plant that absorbs nutrients from the soil to supply nourishment to the plant. When your soul is rooted in bitterness, a devastating chain of sins which is mentally, verbally and overtly springs up. Bitterness ripens into anger, hatred or vindictiveness, the natural foundation for gossip, maligning, violence or even murder. However, the memory of a past grievance or, or forgiven sin must not be allowed to generate further sins. Past sins must be isolated from the present to break this chain reaction. That's what the things that are happening for us is that we are continuing this chain of reaction to our sins. And we go on taking it, go on taking it one by one, one by one, one by one. But Lord Jesus Christ has said, when you have named your sins, forget those sins and keep moving. The guilt conscious as such, these people who are preachers in the Christendom are preaching that. The way that you are guilty, the way you are doing the things, God has not forgiven you. That's why you are having such suffering. No! That suffering depends upon your self-judgment or divine discipline. For with, it has been written in First Corinthians chapter 11, stating to the fact that many are weak, sick, and many are sleeping. And this weak in the sense, illness which is a first statement of warning discipline and the sick in the sense which is organic illness which is to the fact of intensive discipline and a number sleeping means dying discipline the greek word chimao which is used figuratively for the physical death of believers only not for an unbeliever if a believer stubbornly remains carnal the lord may prematurely terminate his life through dying discipline or the sin unto death. So to explain this, when we are still going on without the confession of our sins, we have either self-judgment or divine discipline. That's what, whenever we sin, we sin in the sense not of unbelief, that is as many unbelievers do, who are not regenerated, that is they fail to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But here when we sin, that is the sin of the, of the sin nature, what we have seen, the lust pattern towards antinomianism or legalism, or as such, prints towards weakness of your area of strength or your area of weakness. Wherewith, in area of weakness, you repeat to do the same sin like fornication, drinking, X, Y, Z. Area of strength, that's what you cover that sins by your good deeds. And antinomianism, that's what you meant to say, you do not follow. That is Christian immoral degeneracy. And Christian moral degeneracy is your legalism. That's what you replace that with your legalistical work as such the pastors were preaching today. They're preaching you these things in the pulpits wherewith if you're legally right, you are correct. That, that, wherewith they say in your area of your strength, you do good deeds and do good offerings and do good tithes, which are not at all a tithe for you to give in this church age. But tithes have been ruled out. They have been stopped. And in 1 Corinthians 16, 2, when Peter, Apostle Paul, was asking for the money, he was asking for the poor saints of the Jerusalem who are in return believers in the Lord, who didn't have a goat for them for going. And these rich churches would offer them, and the churches in such kind of places would be established. And never ask a tithe. And the people who failed to listen, who failed to discern this truth, they are raising hell. Kindly correct the things which are essential for you all to know the truth. And if you fail 
That's what we meant to say. Whenever you sin, you are liable for discipline. For a believer, the discipline towards these four lust patterns of the sin nature, and for an unbeliever, the discipline is eternal death, because the only sin which is reckoned unto him is that of failure to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter how an ill or uneducated person is, he knows that he has to marry a woman. But these educated fools who themselves call as great orators, great philosophical minds, great empirical mind, if not great rationalistical mind, the people who think that they can make a replacement of the divine design of the God's original creation by a man, they can be satisfied with cattle, and a man can be satisfied with beast, a man can be satisfied with the fowls of the seven. That's what they are planning, they are telling, they are reasoning around. But if you ask an uneducated person, he knows that man should marry a woman. But these fools, though they are educated, though they are philosophers, though they are orators, though they are in my knowledge, we are called them sheer rut of teachers, sheer rut of ministers' cloth. These men are failing to know that a man is satisfied only in a woman. These men, the great, great, great men of this world who have been recorded in history, failed to realize and to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ in at least their logical sequence, where it, an unbeliever will say there is no God, and if a fool says in his heart there is no God, at least he should have a logical reasoning as such, who is that God? But these people, they are thinking as such this Islamic or Mormonism, which they call as a skepticism or mysticism to their teachings and their writings. They are thinking without having a reason as such, what is the way of salvation? And they are preaching that there is no divinity and the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And these people, they are thinking that we can have relationship not with a true physical woman, but we can have relationship with our soul and with our spirit. If there is no physical relationship with a woman, if she is not physically alive, if she is not physically present, how can you be fulfilled in her? Do you think you can fulfill in her soul, you can fulfill in her spirit? When she is not there, really in existence for you, before you, in your eyes, that's what Islamism is. These people, they are thinking they can have a relationship with a woman, with such kind of a things of a soul and a spirit. And this Islamic people, they are not able to understand that the physical body is required. And this physical body is Lord Jesus Christ. And the soul and the spirit is what they have when they die, when they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. As being transformed from dichotomy to trichotomous nature, and they are called as a regenerated one. And you Muslims, you are preaching right, but wrong God. A wrong method, a wrong way. It is not Muhammad. You have only one God, Allah. Wherewith even Abraham believed upon Lord Jesus Christ for his righteousness. And if you are born to that same Abraham, to Keturah and Hagar, then you also should believe upon the same Lord wherewith Abraham believed. And the same Lord wherewith Abraham believed was Lord Jesus Christ. And he believed in his physical body, and he believed in his way of salvation. And even as we will be really fulfilled if you are physically alive in a physically alive woman. Likewise, you as a member of the human race should believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. And if you fail to believe in it, you are considering to the fact that you can be satisfied in the soul and the spirit of a woman who is not physically alive. And if you are physically alive, then you are spiritually dead as an unbeliever. But whereas a believer is physically alive, is spiritually alive, because he believes upon the Lord Jesus Christ for his regeneration. And these things are quite essential for you to understand the truth. Because these things, until and unless you believe, you can never have. You can never have the things of your spiritual discernment, which a trichotomous nature will be taught for us by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So whenever you sin, you are liable for discipline. That's what Hebrews 12, 6 says. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. 
And here in your sin, either it's your own self-judgment or divine discipline. That's what, either if you take the responsibility upon your shoulders for the sin that you have committed and use 1 John 1, 9 in the privacy of a priesthood, your cursing will be turned towards blessing, your dis divine discipline will be minimized. If not, you will be not going to take the hard knocks of the school. But rather, God in His grace will provide a way for you, in a way of an installment for your punishment. So that depending upon your integrity, upon your loyalty, upon your love and dedication towards the devoted nature of learning Bible doctrine, will make you to give more grace and more grace for you as an humble believer to learn Bible doctrine. And as long as you still resist to learn Bible doctrine, you will be kept for suffering. Suffering to the extension as such that divine discipline will end you up. That's what he says, many are sick, many are weak, and many are sleeping. Our choice should be made between self-judgment and divine discipline. Neglecting rebound. That's what, as a right man has a right woman, a right way of worship unto the Lord in a true manner is rebound to the right Lord. If it is not a rebound, and if it is not under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this unique dispensation of the church age, under the completion of canon of scripture, then no matter what you do, all those things in the sight of the Lord are sheer rut. You may be thinking that you have worshipped Lord, apart from rebound, and say that I am fine, I have done things unto God. That might be well with your congregation, that might be well with your ceiling of your church. But as far as Lord is concerned, it has not even passed that ceiling to hear his voice. Because Lord listens to them who, to which Lord God the Holy Spirit gives an information concerning you after searching your mind, wherewith you are attaining to the spiritual maturity, and what is dearth in you that will be fulfilled until and unless Lord God the Holy Spirit gives a report unto Lord God the Father, and Lord God the Father is going to give you what you require through His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross as a gift for this church. And if you do not follow this right procedure of worshipping the Lord, you are also going out of the divine origin for a man and a woman. A man is complete in a woman. As such, rebound and controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is what it makes a completion of our true and worship of John 4.24. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and biblical truth. That is what worship him in the spirit of what? Filling of controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And biblical truth represents Bible doctrine. Even as such, for a right church, you have a right congregation. Even as for a right congregation, you have a right pastor teacher. A pastor teacher who is dedicated, who is faithful, who is prepared. Because God used a faithful man called as Daniel for his generation. And in this generation, God wants to use you. And if it is not possible for him to use you, if you are not prepared... And as long as you are not prepared faithfully to do his ministry, no matter what well you are, you may be oily, greasy, hampy, dampy minister in the sight of the Lord, in the sight of the men. But as long as you are concerned in the sight of the Lord, you are nothing. You are not being sent. And these men who want to not endure sound biblical doctrine, and these men who doesn't want to know the truth, and these men who are failures to learn Bible doctrine, and these are the men are like Genesis and Jambres, who resisted the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate in the faith. That's what is a reward for you as a pastor teacher if you are failing to teach the word in exegesis, categorical, and isochological background study. As long as you are there ruining the fellowship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as long as you are there as a obstacle or a stumbling block not to grab the church from learning biblical doctrine, truth, under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are liable to answer unto the Lord. And as long as you wait in carnal relationship to fulfill your lusts, so worst will be your judgment upon you. As a right man to a right woman, as a right way of worship, towards the right Lord God Almighty, which is 1 John 1, 9 of rebound. And as long as to the right church to feed his flock through a right pastor teacher who is under the divine authority given for him under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
as these two things are as real that a man is complete in a woman and as Lord God is satisfied in our true fellowship when we are through rebound and confession of our sins through 1 John 1 9 and being under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this unique dispensation of the church age likewise a right pastor teacher who preaches the word of the Lord accurately is what God is satisfied and is honorable and you are a person out not like a Genesis and Jambres but rather you are the person like Moses who is fulfilling his task that man resisted the truth and performed false miracles and this man of this church age in the period of apostasy are resisting the truth by following lying vanities by replacing the word of the Lord with miracles healings or tongues and this men are here showing forth the manifold arrogance of Satan failure to church to believe them John 20 31 that these things are written and written in the sense that they have to feed the flock by following the Lord Jesus Christ which is Bosco of the Greek and Pimeno in the Greek and again Bosco three times told to Peter to feed the flock feed the flock feed the flock and this requires constant preparation a daily demand from the Lord that they have to be faithfully prepared to learn Bible doctrine and until and unless a preacher is not prepared to preach Bible doctrine, how can he handle the flock and how well he is there here in the pulpit enjoying the grace of our Lord in vain. And he is answerable to God. Don't forget that your death is not inevitable. Don't forget that you are even as such your judgment is also inevitable. So you have to be quite careful with the things that are dealing that are dealing the things ordained and pertaining from Lord unto you because you're not dealing the things of the Lord as this men require to their eating ears not to end your sound doctrine and this men are called resistors of the truth the one who resent biblical doctrine the one with corrupt minds and these are the men who have been called as reprobates Mine mine tikel of our sin concerning the faith which has been given for us to believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in his Bible doctrine which is the mind of Christ so when these people fail to rebound they are liable for discipline and Apostle Paul makes and gives us that you choose your option between your self judgment and divine discipline neglecting your rebound plunges the believer into divine discipline the Apostle Paul specifically warns the Corinthians of this principle in the passage of towards the communion table and which is the only ritual mandated for us to be done apart from water baptism as these people follow and as such water baptism is not there here because at the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you have been given and you have been united into the royal family of God and into the kingdom of Christ and your duty if you take as a water baptism is that you're ready to die as a martyr unto the Lord and to do his work the passage about the communion table as told in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 through 32 before partaking of the communion elements a believer should examine or judge himself which is nothing but synonymous for rebound but let a man examine himself rebound and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup as told in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 every believer has a right to partake of the communion elements but each believer is warned never to eat or drink with unconfessed sin in his life for he who eats and drinks eats and drinks judgment upon himself which is divine discipline if it does not judge the body rightly says first corinthians 11 29 and 11 38 says for this reason many among you are weak that is warning discipline and sick intensive discipline and a number sleep that is dying discipline as told in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 30 but if you are judged yourselves rightly that is rebound we shall not be judged that is divine discipline first corinthians 11 31 and this judgment for the unbelievers is number one to judge rightly who is the true lord by believing the gospel and this cults who have been raised through deism pantheism or such kind of a christian science or theosophy of mundane astrology or natural astrology as such and making a subject of 
considering cloning into Christian science, which in return is nothing but astrology to the point of core. These people, if they do not judge with their right judgment upon the shoulders, that is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, then they shall have severe punishment as such. That these are the failures, though they have been given such kind of a grace. And they will be an example as such to the offensive strategy of Satan, to its tactical victory, that they fail to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and they shall be burning in the hell as dead carpuses lot some unto their smell. So today is the day of salvation for you to judge rightly, for a believer to judge rightly to the confession of his sins for rebound, to have fellowship with Lord God the Father, whereas for an unbeliever, the right judgment upon the shoulders kept upon him, number one, to turn from dichotomy nature to trichotomous nature by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his simple gospel by faith alone in Christ alone under the sanctification and regeneration work done by Lord God the Holy Spirit when he believes the truth so that the truth shall set him free and the truth is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and they shall be saved. That is your judgment of your right responsibility upon you and if you fail that you have the alternative, which is eternal condemnation or eternal judgment, which is hell. And you shall be burnt in the fire forever and forever. And this I am giving you as an information, not as a reprimand as such. It's your fate. You accept it or reject it. But your attitude towards Christ is what makes the difference. As such, your attitude towards the woman makes your marriage. And to have a conjugal relationship with her. Likewise, your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ makes you to have a spiritual conjugal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ through his doctrine, through his mind. And when you are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord in order that we may not be condemned along with the world as told in 1 Corinthians 11, 32. And the word if in verse 31, a second class condition of the Greek, which has four classes of condition, if and it is true, if and it is false of the second class, if and it is, it may be or may not be, and if the fourth class, it says, I wish it were be like this, but it is not like that. That's what it is happening to many unbelievers. I wish they could believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior, but the darkness of their mind, the spiritual death in them, which is spiritually blinded, never makes them to believe upon the Lord. But I wish, at least one person by listening to this gospel should be saved. The gospel which is upon the Lord Jesus Christ in the analogy of a right man and a right woman. As a man gets married to a woman, there is no other option as such. Even in this country of today's apostasy period, people are promoting homosexuality, lesbianism, and bestiality to the core in civil courts, which is against the divine design of our my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Homosexuality, the punishment in the law was to stone them to death. Lesbianism, punishment to the death. Both the male and the female. Both the males, both the females. Bestiality, the animal and the male. Bestiality, the animal and the female. That was an extension of the root cause for the AIDS in our country, if not in the world. Because of that bestiality, Lord arrested them. But today it is prevailing because of your hardness and your sickness and your thinking that you can be happy with them. The consequences of that is AIDS, which is an incurable disease in India, even as such in any part of the world. Of course, they're finding medicines in the technology to answer them back. But as true it is that AIDS is existence when they have a sex with bestiality, so is it true of your eternal condemnation and death when you try to have your conjugal spiritual relationship apart from Lord Jesus Christ with any other God as such you are thinking. Because they are no gods and they are not gods. As true is my Lord Jesus Christ, as true is the woman for a right man. And as true is a woman, so true is my Lord Jesus Christ for the savior of this mankind of this sinful mankind to correct the word. That is how Lord has gave himself to this world. 
as you follow homosexuality, lesbianism, and bestiality, which in return yields for you your moral death, even as such your physical death. So here, apart from Lord Jesus Christ, a physical death in the sense of not satisfaction of your life, and not knowing the true happiness wherewith Lord has kept you. The same thing here in this world. Apart from Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to have number one, spiritual death. And number two, a physical death of such kind of a small moment of happiness with your right woman, as told in Ecclesiastes 9.9. 9. And apart from that, you have only hell, perpetual misery reserved and kept for you apart from Lord Jesus Christ. Because you do not believe in him, if you have Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be either a peon or a prince ruler, depending upon your spiritual status of your growth, reaching towards the status of history pillar, by reaching to the target of maximum glorification unto the Lord. And this eighth second class condition indicates the Corinthian believers should have been judging themselves, but were not. That's what is happening today in this world. People are not able to judge themselves, which is the right salvation, which is Lord Jesus Christ alone. And these believers are not able to judge themselves through the rebound, which is to have a right fellowship in this unique dispensation of the church age, wherewith the two distinct ministries of Lord God the Holy Spirit, number one, indwelling in you, and number two, controlling mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, wherewith indwelling is permanent and controlling ministry is temporary, and which could be recovered back by your confession of your sins through rebound, through 1 John 1 9. And that's the responsibility for you as the shoulders kept upon you as in the rebound technique. There, the people of the Corinthians failed. The resulting divine discipline occurred to them, which devastated the congregation. The three categories of discipline caused by spiritual maladies affected the carnal Corinthians. As told, number one, weak illness, which are basically not organic in nature. This includes the loss of energy and strength, motivation, and even depression. That's what people are claiming in exorcisms, that the depression is one of a demon that has been occupied through them, which is not a demon. But depression is what your attitude, that you're weak, you're not taking the responsibility upon your shoulders, and that's why you're losing your energy, losing your strength, losing your motivation, and that's why you're becoming depressed. So the responsibility for you as a believer is through confession of your sins, through rebound. And for our unbelievers, we have a different analogy as such. We shall take that tomorrow as we continue this series. Because it's a long tape, and these people, if they listen, it is profitable for them. And if they are not listening, it is not profitable for them. Because day by day, our renewal procedure has been demanded. And we have to go two hours, 40 minutes a day for them to learn. And if I preach them over 40 minutes, the people, they are not able to take it. They are falling asleep. They are not able to listen to the truth. So many are weak. They lose their energy and strength, they lose their motivation, they lose their depression. And Satan has for an unbelievers as such, its various tactics as such to avoid them. But God in his grace graciously provides you to believe upon the Lord. And number two, this is, this is called as warning discipline to encourage the believer to remount. And number two, which is called as an intensive discipline, it includes definite organic illness, even to the point of becoming an invalid. Organic illness as such, the chronic diseases, as such, this cardiac department wherewith the people are suffering. These chronic diseases and these cardiac di diseases, which are an illness to the core for you to realize to the maximum that you are under the stage of second thing called as sickness, which is an intensive discipline designed to shock the rebellious believer out of carnality so that you can come to know that the God is going to take you till to the point of death and corrects you so that you could be out of that shock, so that you can be out of your premature extinction of this life given to you, but rather be obedient unto the Lord and learn Bible doctrine because you have been kept alive here not to be out of or not to be out of Bible doctrine but rather to be filled of Bible doctrine to learn Bible doctrine and to give number one priority the mind of Christ and to be as a mature believer and to use as a Christian virtue more than Daniel used in his teenagers and he was a ruler for 90 years but you as a believer can be more than that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, number one, and become a trichotomous nature being regenerated. And number two, as you grow up, daily gap, 
That's what the quotation should be. I am mad for gap. Mad in the sense mental attitude dynamics towards learning Bible doctrine and its mechanics. And the gap is grace as a apparatus of perception. So you have to be mad for the gap and not gap for the mad. But rather you have to be mad. You have to be mentally mental attitude dynamics prepared very well to learn the grace apparatus of perception and that mental attitude dynamics very well prepared for you is number one rebound for a believer and for an unbeliever is a regeneration to believe upon the lord jesus christ and upon his gospel so many are sick this intensive discipline is designed to shock the rebellious believer out of carnality and number three the dying discipline which is called a sleep the greek word koimao K-O-I-M-A-O, which is used figuratively for the physical death of the believers only, because, as told in 1 Thessalonians 4.14, a believer stubbornly remains carnal, and the Lord may prematurely terminate his life. So dying discipline or the sin unto death, as told in 1 John chapter 5 or 16a, for which Satan doesn't have authority as told in 5.18 of 1 John, not even to touch a believer. And these people who believe in the belief of the Lord or X, Y, Z, the way they're preaching, that they're Christians and they've been possessed of evil, and they're Christians, they have been, yeah, they have been influenced by, they have been indwelt by such kind of a satanic nature is false. When you as a believer believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, it is Lord Jesus, it is Lord God, the Holy Spirit is going to indwell in you, and there is no way of demonic possession. You have a demonic influence upon you, but you will never have a demonic possession. And the way these leaders falsely teach you of this apostate era, do not believe them. The truth is that they are resisting the truth as Janices and Jambres, and that's why they are rising a woman to preach and have authority over the man in the pulpit, and that's why they are replacing still miracles, healings, and tongues which have been seized and that's the reason they have been kept here to take even tithes and these are the one who are resenting the truth men of corrupt mind and they are the one who are reprobates to the core or reject them as moses rejected the genesis and jambros but you have to believe the gospel you have to learn the truth and learning biblical truth is what makes you free and as we continue this tomorrow, we shall know in depth the things which are quite essential for us, particularly a right man and a right woman, wherewith a man is fulfilled in the divine original creation of the way he was there to be satisfied in a woman, and never to be satisfied in the cattle, never to be satisfied in the beasts. Likewise, God in his divine plan, in his divine wisdom, in his divine decrees, he originated a solution for a sinful mankind and that solution is Lord Jesus Christ and in that believing the true divine design given for us cladded in human nature in a filial one who became God man metamorphosized for our salvation that believing upon him we shall have the righteousness imputed to us and that divine righteousness or absolute righteousness is what makes us to have a right and true fellowship with him is what makes the difference for us to understand Bible doctrine. And as long as we fail to learn, and as long as we fail to believe the truth that God designed a woman for a man to be completed, and God designed Lord Jesus Christ in His grace in the form of a God-man for our salvation, till that time you are vain, and you are reprobate, and you are mind corrupted of thinking. Likewise. Here for an unbeliever, Satan has made God's grace for you as a way not to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's grace has been made for you through Satan to be blinded. And God's grace in vain has been made by you by Satan to become spiritually dead. Because you are born spiritually dead and it still forces you to replace that spiritual death nature through religion, by its pious attitude, by its devotion, and making you to be socially well, but never making you to shut off or to clear off or to shun off all those evil natures and come and to look to know the divine good. 
That's why it makes you to be human good, which is modus operandi of Satan, and evil of human, which is called as modus vivendi of Satan. You fail to realize those things. You fail to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, though you are spiritually dead and been having a divine immortal soul given to you, by making your thinking right, by making your concepts right, by making your believing right upon the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan wants you not to listen to the truth. Satan wants you to listen to such kind of a sheer writers who are out of context of the subject, who do not even know how to discern the truth dispensationally as such, and make you to be a hell. But for your simple logic of your remembrance to your concise, that your father Abraham believed upon Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation, then how much more you have to be then the Rakabites, exampled out for us in Jeremiah. That they obey their father and respect him till date. And if you obey your father and respect him till date, then believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, which for his righteousness your father Abraham believed. And he was glad to take that salvation given to him. How much more you have to be there to take this more readily. In this grace period of the church age, because you have a completed canon of scripture, and even you have the information where we walk with you two miles than one, to make it to understand, to make it to realize the truth, that believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And never forget, a man is complete in a woman, and we, the sinful mankind of this world, dying an unbelieving world which is perishing, will be saved only by believing upon the right, true, divine design for to save this mankind, sinful mankind to correct, to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and they shall be saved. And as we continue tomorrow, we shall have the subject. We thank you, Father, for the prayers that are given to us to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that have been studied and make it a source of blessing and challenge to them to realize to the conscience of that fact as God designed women for a man to be satisfied and not in cattle or, ba or, or the beasts of the field, but rather a right woman for a right man. Likewise, even you, in your grace, has designed for us under divine decrees a right solution, which is Lord Jesus Christ. And he is our only savior. He is our only mediator. We are with the one who told, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that believing upon the Lord, we shall have life eternal. And Lord, he who has a son has eternal life. And he who doesn't believe upon the Son of God doesn't have life, but the wrath of the Lord abides upon him. But Father, it is our plea that this man could know the truth, the truth which have been kept through your beloved friend Abraham for them, so that they could not be perished but come to know the truth. And it's left to the hardness of their heart as Satan blinds them not to know the truth. To believe upon the gospel or not, it is the common and efficacious grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which has done, but revealing to us through Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If they believe upon it, they shall be saved. And if they do not believe, it is their fate. But serve our duty, Lord, as you are told, to walk two miles as an unprofitable slave to do our duty that we close our duty to do. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank you.